It's so crazy how we get to see our favorite WWE superstars every week for years. And as soon as they're no longer part of the WWE, we hardly ever catch a glimpse of most of them. What's even crazier is the transformation these wrestlers undergo during this period. It literally gets so much that they become totally unrecognizable. Find that hard to believe? Well, it's time to test yourself as we show you our list of WWE wrestlers that you won't recognize today. First, we have Tammy Sitch, or Sunny, as she's more popularly known. If you don't know her, go ask a veteran WWE fan to tell you what Tammy was like. She was easily one of the most famous female wrestlers during the New Generation era and Early Attitude era, and for a good reason. She was pretty, skillful, and extremely captivating so much that she is widely considered to have been the first ever diva in the WWE. Tammy came into the WWE in 1995 with her late boyfriend Chris Candido, and the pair formed a duo called the Body Donners. Soon enough, Sunny became a fan favorite. Soon after, she began getting gigs to manage the WWE superstars, including Farouk Assad, the Godwins, the Smoking Guns, and many more. And on other days, fans got to see Sunny serving as a special guest commentator. And not to talk down on her skills and versatility, but Tammy Sitch got all these gigs because she generated so much male fans' traction for the WWE. She was a sex symbol that transcended just the wrestling world. However, she just couldn't stay out of trouble. What started as her drug addiction and lack of professionalism, making her an on-and-off WWE character, soon became life as a jailbird. First was a crazy four-week span in 2012 in which Sonny got arrested five times. One count of disorderly conduct, one count of third-degree burglary, and three counts of violating a protective order. Next was a four-month jail sentence in 2013 and another three-month sentence in 2015. Things seemed to get worse between 2016 and 2021 as Sonny spent a combined duration of more than a year in prison for everything from multiple counts of contempt in court to fugitive counts to illegal weapon possession and DUI charges. Most recently, she has been charged with driving under the influence and manslaughter for killing a 75-year-old man in a car crash in March 2022 and is now awaiting sentencing. Now, we know age always depends on a person's appearance, but being in and out of jail sure makes things worse. From the sexy diva fans used to drool over back in the 90s, it's near impossible for fans to recognize Sunny now in the numerous mugshots of her that circulate the media. But while Sunny's physical transformation is largely based on her messing up her life, fans can hardly recognize Jake Roberts because he has turned his life around. Okay, maybe a bit because of age too. You'd be forgiven for not knowing the name Jake Roberts, but not so much if hearing Jake the Snake doesn't ring a bell. Sure, this WWE Hall of Famer was extremely successful and won multiple titles in all the promotions he went to during his wrestling career that lasted from the 80s into the early 2000s. WE, the National Wrestling Alliance, World Championship Wrestling, Mexico-based Asistencia, Asesoría y Administración, Extreme Championship Wrestling, and even TNA. This dude made a name for himself everywhere he went. But the name that echoes most in the halls of iconic wrestlers is tied to his incredibly disturbing yet thrilling persona that brought snakes with him to matches. Even if you're Gen Z or you're not a big fan of the WWE's 80s and 90s era, You've definitely heard of the star that brought giant, real, living snakes into the ring and sometimes let the snake get a bite of the action. However, behind the thrill of his psychologically tormenting persona, Robert struggled with substance addiction issues. This problem lasted for decades and resulted in his wife leaving him. There's even a documentary titled Beyond the Mat that shows the details of Roberts's life during this spiraling period. After Jake left the WWE due to his unhealthy lifestyle, he added a lot of weight and was completely out of shape. Sure, he kept on competing in other promotions and even had a stint back in the WWE. Fans could see the former superstar becoming a shadow of his former self until suddenly he was a ghost from the media. 
Jake Roberts wasn't competing in any wrestling promotion. He wasn't anywhere in the news, and he wasn't getting into any legal troubles as he used to. By the time he'd resurfaced, he was a changed man. Apparently, Roberts had gone through a number of rehabilitation programs and had finally become sober. He has now gotten back with his wife after over two decades of being separated and is back in the wrestling world as a manager for All Elite Wrestling. But his life isn't the only thing that got transformed. Jake Roberts now looks like a completely different man from the one who hung snakes around his neck and tormented other wrestlers. He had lost quite some weight compared to his post-WWE wrestling days and even got new teeth. Add the fact that he's nearly 70 and now has grey hair everywhere and you'd need more than a couple of guesses to recognise him as Jake the Snake. From one hall of famer to another, up next we have Mark Henry. When it comes to iconic WWE wrestlers, very few compare to the world's strongest man. Many don't know this, but before Mark Henry the wrestler, there was Mark Henry, the two-time Olympian, the Pan American Games gold, silver and bronze medalist, and two-time US national powerlifting champion. The big man is also a three-time US national weightlifting champion, an American Open winner, a two-time US Olympic Festival champion, has held all three senior US American weightlifting records and still holds the WDFPEF world records in the squat, deadlift and total. During his 25-year WWE career, Mark Henry became a one-time WWF European champion and a two-time world champion. Pretty impressive, right? Well, while being in the WWE doesn't require all the weight in the world, heavy lifting and being a world-renowned strongman definitely requires a lot of weight. And Mark Henry definitely had that weight, almost too much of it at a point. For real though, at his heaviest, Mark Henry weighed a crazy 412 pounds. Say what you want, but he was definitely on the overweight list, and the WWE seemed to concentrate the entirety of his persona on that. Fast forward to now, and Mark Henry doesn't look like the same man he used to be. Sure, he's still the giant we know him to be, but he has traded the rough dreads hairstyle he used to rock as a WWE wrestler for a new bald look, and has now grown his beards very full. But the major difference comes from his weight. The new Mark Henry look would probably still qualify for every club bouncer's job, but he has shed so much weight that it's hard to recognise now. What do we mean by too much? Well, back in 2018, Mark Henry announced he'd be interested in getting back into the ring, but this time he decided to be a bit lighter in the ring. So he got into the gym and has now shed 80 pounds. That's nearly six stones. Damn! Jude lost all that weight and has now joined the All Elite Wrestling promotion looking like a new man. Moving on, we have Lex Luger, yet another superstar from the 80s and 90s wrestling era who battled drug use and a number of other legal issues. Lex Luger was a professional football player who had stints in the Canadian Football League, the United States Football League and the NFL before starting his pro wrestling career in 1985. When Luger stepped into the wrestling world, one thing that made him stand out was his physique. Jude didn't even have the wrestling ability of his technically inclined contemporaries, but he didn't have to. He was built like a wrestler and was so ripped that Vince McMahon touted him to be an eventual replacement for Hulk Hogan as the top babyface in the company. That didn't quite work out, but over the next two decades, Luger competed in the WWE, the WCW, and TNA wrestling, becoming a household name in the global wrestling scene. At his peak, he won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship twice, was the WWA World Heavyweight Champion once, and became a five-time NWA WWCW United States Heavyweight Champion. Lex Luger is also only the second WCW Triple Crown Champion, and although he never won a major title in the WWE, he fought in a number of blockbuster WrestleMania matches and was the 1994 Royal Rumble co-winner with Bret Hart. Pretty neat, yeah? Anywho, Luger had his final wrestling match in August 2006, but before then, he had a history of getting in trouble. There was the case of domestic abuse of a fellow wrestler and his live-in girlfriend, Miss Elizabeth, in 2003, 
which was followed by his arrest on DUI charges. A month later, Miss Elizabeth's death due to mixing pills with vodka brought scrutiny on Lex, and he was found to have been in possession of a number of illicit controlled substances. Long story short, he'd be in and out of jail until October 2007 when he suffered a nerve impingement in his neck that led to temporary paralysis. It wasn't until then that it was discovered that Lex was not only on hard drugs, but also used a lot of body-enhancing pills to get his body in that superb shape. We're talking about the usage of growth hormones and testosterone with and without the aid of doctors. Nearly a month after his spinal stroke, Luger was in a complete quadriplegic state and couldn't move his arms or legs. By 2009, he had turned his life around, turning to Christianity, and even began advising younger generation wrestlers to avoid drugs. After years of rehab, he was able to walk and drive in 2010, but by 2021, he had become completely reliant on a wheelchair for mobility. Now, having joined the WWE as a wellness advisor, Lex Luger looks nothing like the macho man he used to be. He has lost a whole lot of weight, and although he claims to be happier than he has ever been, it's impossible to find physical similarities between him and the dude who walked into Hulk Hogan's office back in 1985. This next dude is hardly as iconic as any of the previously mentioned wrestlers, but he's considerably harder to recognize today. Kevin Thorne. Given his many unsuccessful spells in the WWE, very few would remember the name Kevin Thorne. What might ring a bell, though, is seeing him clad in his trademark vampire costume with his thinly trimmed beard and sleek black hair. Kevin joined the WWE in 2002, two years after his pro wrestling debut, and was sent to the promotion's developmental territory, Ohio Valley Wrestling. After two years in the OVW, he was called up to the SmackDown brand as a religious zealot called Mordecai. We can't really say who's to blame, but for some reason, the Mordecai character never got off the ground, and Kevin was sent back to the OVW and eventually released in 2005. Less than two years later, he was brought back to the WWE, and the vampire character of Kevin Thorne was born. Competing in the ECW as a member of the New Breed faction, Thorne and his valet, Ariel, had less than a year with the catchy vampire character before he was again returned to the OVW. Eventually, he was released in January 2009, and word on the streets was Kevin was in the independent circuit and wrestling in Europe. However, in the last couple of years, images have resurfaced of this guy, and he's nothing like the creepy vampire character or any wrestling persona he ever had, to be fair. Kevin now works as a realtor in the Indianapolis, Indiana, metro area and has gained so much weight you'd be forgiven for thinking he's just another regular real estate guy. Speaking of guys in creepy red and black costumes, up next on our list of WWE wrestlers you cannot recognize today, we have Kane. There's pretty much only one Kane, at least, only one that matters in pro wrestling, and that's the man we all know to be the brother of WWE's all-time great, The Undertaker. Frankly speaking, Kane himself is an all-time great, and he has the records to show for it. After initially playing a number of characters from when they joined the WWE in 1995, the man behind the mask was repackaged as Kane, who was quite frankly a monstrous personification of a mix of fire and juggernaut. This character would go on to be revealed to be The Undertaker's younger half-brother, and together, the duo gave fans what might be the best storyline McMahon and his writers will ever come up with. While The Undertaker gets talked about more often, Kane was also a super successful character, being a three-time world champion, a 12-time world tag team champion, a two-time intercontinental champion, and a Money in the Bank winner. He's also only the third man to complete WWE's Grand Slam and holds the record for the most appearances in a Royal Rumble match at 20. With how iconic of a character this dude is, you're probably wondering how he'd be difficult to recognize now, right? Well, how about the fact that for over two decades, we hardly ever got to see the man behind the mask? All we knew was he was a big man with demonic eyes and long hair. Not much other than this. Well, after leaving the WWE to become a part-time actor and the elected mayor of Knoxville, 
The man behind the mask has really transformed what fans remember him to look like. Sure, he's still a bulky dude, but at 56, he appears to be in the shape of his life. Sounds weird given most wrestlers tend to let go of their shape when they leave active wrestling, but not Glenn Thomas Jacobs. Yep, that's the Big Red Machine's actual name. He recently posted some topless pictures of himself on social media, and it had fans drooling because of how ripped he is, all thanks to DDP yoga. Not only does his body look different, even his face doesn't give off that he was the man tormenting other wrestlers back in the day. Of course, he doesn't wear a mask anywhere, but more than that, he no longer wears the contact lenses he used to, so his eyes are less demonic. He now has eyebrows again, thankfully, and has shaved off the long hair he used to rock. Simply put, when you see Kane now, what you see is the mayor of Knoxville, not the Undertaker's demonic younger brother. Moving on, does anybody remember little Spike Dudley? Good old Spike was the little guy among the famous group, and WWE's most decorated tag team in history, the Dudley Boys. The team was made up of Bubba Ray Dudley, Devon Dudley, and Stacy Keebler, and Spike, and used to be the best tag team in the WWE in the early 2000s. These guys won literally everything, and Spike was part of the team that won cruiserweight, European, hardcore, and tag team titles during his four years as a member. The best of this guy came during his time in the Extreme Championship Wrestling promotion, and real ones definitely remember it. However, Spike was always cast as a low card act in the WWE till he left for TNA. We've got to say it though, he never stopped to entertain fans, no matter how much of an underdog character he was portrayed as. He was loved for being fearless, and for his high-flying fighting style despite his relatively small physique. After the WWE and TNA, he continued to work as a trainer and compete on the independent circuit, going by his real name, Matt Heisen, until 2010. His final match came in 2015, and for a while, he was out of the public eye. Heisen got married, had a daughter, and began working as a financial planner with Mass Mutual. It goes without saying that helping other people plan their finances probably means you have to look a tad more official, so his long, shaggy hair had to go. But that's the least of your worries if you're in a competition to spot the differences between what he looked like then and now. This man now has grey scuff all over his face with a salt and pepper goatee. He now rocks a completely shaven hairstyle and is typically seen sporting glasses not the classic Dudley Boys kind, more responsible looking glasses. He has clearly put on some weight too, so he doesn't look as little as he used to as everyone noticed during his reunion with Bubba Ray and Devon in 2022. In case you had any doubts, let's settle them now. It's just as hard to recognize a small man turned massive as it is to recognize a massive man turned small. Well, he might not exactly be small now, but Big Show definitely doesn't look how we all remember. A total of 23 championships. That includes being a seven-time world champion, an 11-time world tag team champion, and the only wrestler to have won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, WWE Championship, ECW World. Heavyweight Championship and WWE's World Heavyweight Championship says all that needs to be said about how good this guy was. Over the course of his 18-year career, The Big Show was always considered among the best, and his character greatly depended on his gigantic size. After all, it's in the name. At his peak, he weighed 36 stone, or a staggering 504 pounds, and was popularly known as the world's largest athlete. A few years after his retirement, he's no longer the same man. What the Big Show has undergone is the ultimate body transformation, slimming down into a more lean, muscular physique. His transformation began in 2018 after he recovered from hip surgery, thanks to Braun Strowman slamming him through a steel cage. After the surgery, he made the seemingly impossible decision to lose weight, and with the help of celebrity trainer Dodd Romero, the Big Show has lost over 120 pounds from his heaviest weight. Believe it or not, the big man had to challenge his body with everything from swimming to biking to strength training and a ton of other high-energy, high-rep exercises. He also had to ditch his go-to junk foods and stay on a very strict diet. Doesn't sound easy, 
and even the big show doesn't pretend it was. Speaking about his transformation, he told WWE.com, You don't make the transformation I've made without a serious commitment to changing 40 years of improper diet and improper training. I wanted to make a change, and I was given the time and opportunity to make a change, so I took advantage of it. Today, he might still be a 7FT giant, but he's way more trimmed and can even flex his abs. Add his full beard now, and you'd need a close examination to know that he's the same Big Show. Maybe he's not the same dude after all. More of a not-so-big show now, yeah? Lastly, we have Adam Rose. Keeping it real with you, Adam Rose hardly ever appeared as a WWE wrestler, which would make his inclusion in this video weird, but he has become way too unrecognizable for us not to include. Rose began his pro wrestling career in the South African independent circuit in 1995 and was on a number of independent circuits for over a decade before getting signed by the WWE in 2010. He started off pretty well in the Florida Championship Wrestling under the ring name Leo Kruger and became a two-time FCW Florida heavyweight champion. However, when the developmental promotion folded up and he was moved to NXT, Adam Rose struggled to remain relevant in a roster of fresh faces. Only when he turned heel with a character sporting a soul patch, long hair, lean physique and lollipop did he get a bit of traction. But that didn't last long enough as he began getting into trouble. First, a wellness program violation and then some domestic abuse charges. Soon enough, he was released from the WWE, and that was pretty much it. But when we next heard from Adam Rose, he was a whole new man. He had bulked up to thrice his former size, grown a big, bushy beard, and had traded his long hair for a low-cut look. Not gonna lie. Looking at him now, the only things that would give away his identity would be his colorful tights and the signature lollipop. Which of these transformations do you find the most shocking? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. And before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.